Hello and welcome to another episode of Mixed Mowers. In today's video it's going to be a very detailed and in-depth on how to clean and replace a gasket and diaphragm set on a 3.5 classic Briggs & Stratton carburetor. This seems to be the most common reason why a Briggs & Stratton engine will hunt or perhaps won't run correctly. So we're going to take the carburetor and tank off. This is done just by literally just unscrewing the flathead screwdriver on top of the air filter and removing that and then a half inch or 13 mil up against the side of a tank and a 3 8 on the side of the tank. I'll show you very briefly where these pieces go. I don't want to hang around too long on that section because I want to get down and to just do the carburetor and tank. So let's get down and dirty. Let's have a look at this carburetor gasket clean and I hope you find it very, very helpful. Okay, and here is the subject for today. This is gonna to be our gasket diaphragm change and tank flush and carburetor clean. Now this, this is for the 3.75, three and a half classic Briggs and Stratton engines. If it looks like this, this is the engine for you. So all you need to do first off is undo this flat headed bolt. That this one does very, very simply. Take that off. That then gets removed. Make sure you keep all your bits to, together. You remove the air filter just by lifting it up very slightly, and these also split in half. The filter is very, very dirty, very oily, where this engine has been tipped up before. So you can get all, away with just literally running these under the hot water, very hot, soapy water, give them a good squeeze out, a good clean if they're as bad as this. But if they're worse than this, then I'd recommend replacing the whole part. I'll put a link in the description below of where you can get these get these from and the part numbers okay so that's very simple don't lose them pieces next you're going to have your Briggs and Stratton carburetor just here and and your tank and assembly so this is all held together by nuts and bolts and also your governor springs an important note to make is that these engines come with two springs this one here and this one here if they don't have those your engine is not going to run not going to run completely right so make sure it has got those if not you can source those parts off of any local selling site so to remove the carburetor and tank assembly there's a bolt just here and this is either going to be a 13 mil a half inch or a 10 and in this case it's a 10 mil so just slacken that off and remove that bolt and what i do is i put all my bolts inside the air filter just for now just like that so you don't lose them and around the front of the tank just here you'll see there's another bolt here another 10 mil or 3 8 i'm using 10 mils just remove that one there as well and that comes off of any air filter as well okay so now we're in position now, now where we can now remove a tank and carburetor assembly and let's just gently pull the tank off of the engine don't force it it will come just gently 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 and you see this little tiny rubber breather hose that goes in there as well next what you want to do is you've got this little tiny linkage here if you just hold the linkage up and then tilt the tank down to the back it just drops off just like that okay now before you take this carburetor off you need to get rid of all this dirt all this oil all this grime get rid of all of that and then empty the tank out as well so i'm going to do that now and then we get down to a serious business of cleaning this carburetor okay so now that the tank and carburetor is is off the engine I have just given us a bit of an air compressor over just before we start but all i'm going to say to you is is cleanliness is godliness the cleaner the environment when doing a carburetor the better so first thing we're going to do is just remove this whole fuel i keep jam jars and coffee jars to hand just so i can do such do so such that so i'm going to remove all of those pieces of petrol and as much dirt and foreign objects from this carburetor as possible. Very simple. Okay. And if you want to just inspect that petrol, it's yellow, yellow in colour. It's not too bad. It actually smells like petrol. Sometimes when petrol goes stale, it's got like a like a varnish sort of. I can describe it as varnish sort of smell, which is uh, where the fuel's gone off. So if you haven't got an air compressor. Best thing to do, put the fuel cap back on ever so loosely, and then just with that fuel and a paintbrush, literally just start to work in all the areas 
where it's dirty. Stay away from the top of a cardboard if you can. And just try and work those areas off just so you get a nice, clean environment. Spend some time in the cleaning and that'll help you out a bit, a bit later on. So I have compressed this one with an air compressor. They, they do a fantastic job and they're relatively cheap for what they are, but if you're not going to use one, then obviously you can go to any good PC shop or any good sort of hardware shop. They sell little tins of air, of a compressed air, so you can get it from there. So now that that top of that tank is looking a lot cleaner than what it was before I took it off the engine, and all this excess fuel, that will just literally evaporate off. So that's done, and then I keep that fuel just to one side, just so if I need to clean anything else a bit later on, I can do so. I've got a rag here, nice clean rag. Just gonna wipe that area all down. As I say, this will all get evaporated off and it'll soon disappear. But just important not to smoke or anything like that when you're working around petrol. So that's all clean, I'm happy with that. So the next thing to do is just to prepare our site. And you can use kitchen roll, you can use toilet roll, you can use rags or anything at all. And just lay down a nice simple little little cloth table so that you can keep this area as clean as possible. So let me get a bit of rag and then we'll get to work. Rightio, so I've got my pieces of rag and I keep lots of lots of rags. Over here in the UK there's a company called Rag Bags and you can literally buy a, a massive big 25 kilo bag full of them and just they're just cleaned cotton rags. So that's now going to be our sterile environment. So the first thing to do is to remove these five Phillips head screws. Simply just undo those. And then once all five have been removed, we can then look into removing the, the carburetor from, from the tank. So let me just undo these other, these other couple. Carburetor is now starting to work loose, which is good. That's what we want. If they're all undone, it'll lift off and just very, very gently take off the gasket and carburetor. It, will, it might all come off together, it may not. So that's it. And that carburetor gets laid down on top of the tank, on top of the cloth. So here's our gasket and diaphragm. Um, it doesn't actually look too bad, but there's quite a lot of sagging in that in that diaphragm. So these are relatively cheap and again I'll put a link behind where you can pick these up. Um, that's that, the main problem why your tank and diaphragm, sorry why your um, lawnmower is not running as it should do. So that's now been discarded, I'll get rid of that. Inside here this little tiny well you can see there's a lot of dirt and bits of bits of grass in there and what have you. Always be careful when you're filling your lawnmower up because if you don't do it cleanly when you fill up with petrol then that's where your grass is going to end up. So we need to get rid of that first, clean this area up, use your compressed air, use WD-40. And what I also like to use are these uh, dental picks which you can get off of any good uh, retailing sort of outlet. Um, these are fantastic just for agitating the area inside. You also need to get into these tubes here, make sure they're clean, and this one here, and blow those through the compressor or W40. You see that there? Just pull that out. See that? Look. What's coming out of there? Can you see that? So this is absolutely filthy, this car, brother. Can't get in that way. So that's what you're trying to trying to get at, all this stuff here. So let me get all this, cleaned, this area cleaned, and all these holes pushed out with compressed air, and then uh, we'll start to take the car, brother, apart. Okay, so now I have this part of the carburetor that's now completely clean. It's been air compressed through these little tiny two little holes here, one here, one here, and the bottom of the well is now completely clean. So that now is put to one side because that's now in about as clean condition as you're going to get it. So that goes to one side. And next we move on to the carburetor itself. So the first thing you want to do is remove these five Phillips screws and don't lose those because you're going to need them a bit later on. Once them screws have come, whoop, come out, turn the carburetor over, and you're going to see a little tiny uh, gauze and a, a little spring. Yeah, just remove that spring ever so gently. That comes out, goes with those, and then this little tiny gauze should just slide off. However, this one's not going to, but we need it to come out. So what I do, a little tiny 
flat headed screwdriver and just gently because plastic just gently underneath it just start to work work the edges up just so you can get get that off if it doesn't come off you need to replace it so just start to tease it up now if it does start to tear you can always cut these so they're just a bit shorter as long as it covers the end of the the end of it the main jet that's where we're hoping to get to this one's not going to come off as easy as I'd like it to which tells me it's not been uh, cleaned for a little while so let me try and get rid of this and then I'll come back to you righty -o, that's now been removed that goes over with your springs and your little five little screws put them all together so you don't lose any of them pieces now the next place we want to get to is we want to get into here which is that's where the main jet is actually located and just here you can see there's some dirt and bits of um, grass in there and that needs to be cleaned out as well so with a very very small flat headed screwdriver again this is plastic so go very careful there's a little tiny nick just here which gives you access to to the main jet just put the car the screwdriver just ever so slightly in there don't push too hard because it is plastic and just gently tease that main jet up that main jet goes there now to clean this what we need to do let me find my dental pick we're going to need to clean certain areas we need to put some fluid cleaning fluid down in here we need to put some cleaning fluid down in this one just here this one will come goes down back up and push fluid out through this section here don't squirt into here because nothing's going to come back just shoot straight in the face so that's where your spring goes so once you clean those areas we then want to clean just inside here you can see there's a little tiny jet just in there that is cleaning also okay so let's get that done now I've got my spray and all I'm going to do literally is put some cleaning fluid in here and you'll see it start to come up and then reverse the process back into there then reverse the process back into there just keep doing that until all that dirt is, is washed away and a gentle clean off all round down into the main jet housing turn the carburetor over and in that little side there like I said just shoot that into there very difficult to get on camera whilst I'm trying to line it up that shoots out the bottom of the carburetor for you're not seeing general clean up in there and it's very important to wear gloves with this stuff any carburetor cleaner because it will actually start to make the gloves brittle so imagine what that's doing to your skin so clean it all away, wash it all away try and keep it off the, off the ground if you can come around the back of the carburetor and you'll see just here there's a, a plastic o-ring and just behind there a little tiny o-ring there that can be removed or just cleaned but just be mindful whatever, you, whatever you're cleaning out may go back into a carburetor so tip it back on its side and wash it back out the other side okay next thing I want to do I want to introduce another clean bit of rag I'm just gently going to wipe all the excess material that's off in here just to get rid of that and we start to break this carburetor down start to make it into a really clean environment as I keep saying cleanliness is godliness when it comes to carburetors if it's not clean it just won't run so take your time and clean all the areas up a bit more inside there get right in there loosen it all up start to agitate it That looks good okay so now it's done we need to look into cleaning the main jet and here's the main jet now these have got three or four holes on them and using my dental picks I'm literally going to not poke new holes or make the holes any bigger I'm just going to run the, the dental pick in each of the holes just to break up any surfaces that are in there on there they're going to, need to be clean and then turn the jet over and down the front of the main jet just put the device into there and as I don't know if you can see there is actually some micro 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 stuff just on that on that pick it is tiny to see I can just about make it out myself so that dental pick goes all the way in cleans that up and then with my carburetor cleaner I'm just literally going to run through the back of the main jet And then at the end, block the end off, 
so it runs through the holes only and make sure it's running out of all the holes it's not actually running out of this hole just here so there's actually a blockage in there somewhere so shoot some spray directly into that hole there and then back through there again block the end up now it's actually running fluid through there let's put some down through the top of a carburetor uh, through the top of a main jet yeah it's got fluid going through it now okay so that now is crystal clear and crystal clean so put that to one side give it out the way of any other dirt and dirt and grime so with, so with with that section now clear and clean just come bring the carburetor back in and just want to double check that all that stuff is is now clean if it's not go back in again with your dental picks or with cocktail sticks just start to work your way inside all these little tiny nooks and crannies there's bits of dirt in there see just, just start to chip away at it gently 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 so it's got to be absolutely clean as you can possibly get it little tiny areas here and you see there's this little bits of dirt here these are all bits that are going to going to contaminate your carburetor so make sure that's all that's all clear So I'm happy with that carburetor now. It's in a much cleaner state than what it was before. So now what we can do, we can now go on and start to place this back on the tank with a new gasket and diaphragm. So let's do that. Okay, so now the tank's back in place. What we now need to do is now put on our gasket and diaphragm set. These are genuine Briggs and Stratton parts I'm using. Um, it always pays not to skimp out on this section because this is the main reason why you're your lawn, your lawnmower isn't running right. These cost around six to eight pounds, anywhere like that. You can see lots of other ones which are which are not as good in my opinion. But if you run the risk of buying cheap cheaper parts, especially from places like China, then you're going to run the risk of it, of it not working. So I use Briggs and Stratton parts just just for this bit here. And your gasket, your diaphragm will go on first, followed by your gasket, and that's where it sits. The next thing to do is to bring back your carburetor, and we need to place the main jet back back inside its housing, which is just there. That plops inside. You might have to get a bit of a wiggle because it does get caught up on a little, little black collar just there that black collar needs to be just the other side of it so you may have to give it just a tap just to move the collar forward and then your your main jet will then sit inside it will go it's just a question of just move, moving that little tiny valve it is free moving inside there and that's it like that so once it goes in I use the back of a screwdriver just to push that main jet home so it's not home yet and then click it goes it goes home next thing to do is to replace your spring and then your metal gauze that goes on now my metal gauze did rip slightly so I've just cut mine slightly shorter just so it it actually works so that's in now in place I'm happy with that and now all we're going to do is literally fit, fit this, this system back on and all we're going to do is literally just put this tube into the hole and then off of a tank in ever so gently. So don't be too worried about line up just yet. We're going to get our screws and we're going to start to line our carburetor up with the screws. So let me get a hold of those. Five. And then we're just literally going to wind, uh, put these screws in first and just put them all in. Don't push them in, just, just put them in, in the relevant places. And once one or two find their way home, you can then start to work on the others just make sure they're going in and once they're in let's just do those five up right now those five screws all nicked up we're in a position now we can now fit this fit this um tank and carburetor set back onto the mower and it's literally just a question of just reversing the process and just making sure that firstly that linkage we saw when we, what we took off that goes back on let me show you it'd be a lot easier right so here we go so now we've got the the um lawnmower back in. i'm just going to hook up my air compressor i just want to blow some of this stuff off out of the way just so we've got a clean a clean environment this is the type of need of compressor gun i use 
just it gets right inside them then little tiny nooks and crannies okay so here's our tank system don't forget you got to have that little plastic clip and the o-ring behind it sometimes they hook on just here and uh, you sort of forget all about them but make sure they're in place so when we go to hook the tank back on first thing you want to do is just hook the little tiny linkage into the only hole that's on top of the carburetor and then tip it back up to where it, where it needs to be next thing we need to do is relocate our little rubber elbow and that goes onto the carburetor the widest side goes onto the carburetor and the the other side goes on to uh, the engine again just going to compress it off very quickly there's a bit of dirt on there okay so my compressor cut in just then so this wider piece goes on the carburetor this piece goes on the engine and you just literally just pop it onto the carburetor like so now as you're lining the whole up tip the rubber elbow over and we're going to try and do this in one go but line it up as you go is the easiest thing so try and hook it onto the pipe there and then work it up onto the tank on up onto the top pipe and just slide it all in together and just gently take your time just to make sure it's all lining up as as you need it lots of parts do move on here so it's a question of just jiggery pokery and get it where it belongs okay. so now that's in place we can now reattach those two 10 mil bolts we had we had the slightly longer one and the slightly shorter one the short one goes at the front there's only one one place it can go just start that one off get it roughly in place and just take two or three turns on that one that will locate that and then take this fuel cap off and then start to place this longer 30, uh, 10 mil bolt or 13 or half inch whatever it is mine's 10 mil just place that into there like that then we're going to get our socket set and just do up this long 10 mil bolt first so that's tightened up and then go around to the front and just tighten up 10 mil or 3 eighths at the front. Fantastic. Now what's left to do is to replace the, the filter. Make sure you're going to clean that or replace that. Um, bear in mind this one is a slightly older version so you may need to um, get another air filter. I do have one to hand. Let me just show you. So whilst we're here, we might as well just, just get it done. I'm just going to remove this, this air filter out. I so say this, this is the, the older style. I'm going to give it a clean with a rag, because that's particularly dirty. There's my rag, there it is. It's very, very oily, very, very dirty. So this is, your engine needs air to breathe. If it doesn't breathe properly, then it's not going to run properly, same as us. So give it a good clean off, all areas. Make sure she's spick and spam. That's lovely. Okay, with that as clean as we can get it, then introduce a new air filter, goes around that way, and the holes line up, and you can put that one back into there like that. Okay, that goes back on top. That's super. And then the fuel cap goes back on in place like that incidentally these have got holes in the top of them so if you leave your lawnmower out in the, in the rain you'll start to gather rainwater in your tank and that won't help either so just double check that all your your um, springs are working as they should do on the top and that your governor arm is, is, is working and then place your air filter housing back on the top it sits on just like that and then the next thing you need would be your flathead bolt drop that in and just snug that home. It doesn't have to be closely tight, it just has to be on. And that's it. And I believe we're finished. Okay, and now we're all done. So we've done a complete carburetor clean, took the main jet out, we've took the gauze out, took the spring out, done a tank flush, we've done everything we need to do. So hopefully now your lawnmower, once it's all been back fitted together, will now run sweet as a nut and will run all year and for another couple of years without having to intervene with anything else. Just remember when you are buying your gasket and diaphragm sets from your online sites, just make sure you're either buying genuine Briggs and Stratton parts or you're buying good reptile makes that you know and that, that you can trust on. Some of the diaphragms that I've seen coming from 
China and places like that, the diaphragms in particular, they just curl up after about three or four minutes and you can have exactly the same problem again. So for a cost of four to eight pounds, it's definitely worth to buy the genuine part. Okay, thank you very much for watching this episode of Mixed Mowers. If you find it helpful, please don't forget to like and also to subscribe and to touch the bell notification so that when I release another video, you'll get a little alert and hopefully you'll find that as helpful as the last one. Thank you very much for watching. See you again soon. Yo, you feel the